It's an honor for me to speak today about Roy Eugene Davis, my guru, my spiritual friend, and beloved teacher of 40 years. And my heartfelt love and prayers, support are offered to all of you, to his beloved wife, Willie, to the staff at CSA, and to all the ministers and devotees worldwide who are grieving the loss of his physical form, of his radiant smile, even as we acknowledge the eternal nature of his being. So I have some words to share with you, but first I I want to uh, let the pear tree speak. Because this tree that is in full bloom today, we have affectionately named the Guru Tree here at CSE because this tree would burst into full bloom every year when he came to be with us. And it was unmistakable and it was always timely. And this year it was a little mysterious because, of course, he wasn't with us physically, but he was with us in his Skype talk. But at that date, which was actually a week later than he ordinarily would be here, it wasn't ready to bloom. But today it is absolutely unmistakable. If a tree could say, hallelujah, I am sure that's what it is singing. I'd like to begin with some verses from scripture, the Guru Strotram, ancient Vedic hymn of praise for the spiritual teacher. My salutations to that Guru who revealed to me that truth which is to be realized, that which is unfragmented, infinite, eternal divinity, which pervades the entire universe, all that is movable and immovable. My salutations to that revered teacher, the one who opened my eyes, which had been blinded by the cataracts of ignorance, applying the divine medicine of self-knowledge. My salutations to that divine teacher who is like the sun that encourages the lotus to bloom, the one who has blessed us with the liberating knowledge which dries up the ocean of seeking and sorrows. My salutations to such a divine teacher who took up a form to bless us with such knowledge. My Lord is the Lord of the universe. My teacher is the teacher of the entire universe, and myself is the self of all. My salutations at the lotus feet of such a guru who has revealed such knowledge to me. Beloved God, you are my mother, you are my father, my friend, my teacher, and my companion. You are all knowledge and wealth. You are all in all. You are everything to me. Roy Eugene Davis was like the sun to me. He was and remains 
a light on my path, a call, a wake-up call, a call to awaken fully, to blossom like a lotus, to open my heart and my mind to the infinite, to fulfill my spiritual destiny in this lifetime, to love and to serve all. There is more praise I would offer for him than there are stars in the sky. He was kind, truthful, dedicated to God and to serving his guru, Paramahansa Yogananda. He was brilliant. He was always curious. He was powerful. He was a good cook, an avid reader. One of my deepest joys is that we would share books. He would send, when he got a new book he liked, he would send it to me and I would do the same. It was a very sweet joy. He was funny, he was compassionate, devotional, wise. He was exacting not always an easy teacher, modest, steadfast on the spiritual path, focused, insightful, surrendered, humble, gracious, a prolific and clear writer, authentic, generous, abundantly generous, and dignified. I always knew when he walked into the room, whether I saw him or not, I knew because the light of his consciousness and the grace that permeated his being would illumine my mind with divine remembrance and my spirit would rise up to meet him. He was like the sun to me, radiant with divine love and with truth. And I loved basking in his presence. And I hope to be forgiven by others for always taking the front row seat (laughs) to be as near to him as I could wherever he was. Many of us met the great yoga master, Paramahansa Yogananda, through him, through the stories of his time with his Guruji. And through his example, we could see the profound impact that a light like Paramahansa Yogananda could have to transform such a life. When he tearfully shared at the Kriya Yoga Congress how Yogananda had answered the question when someone asked Yogananda, what did your guru, Sri Yukteswar, do for you? And when Guruji, when Roy Eugene Davis answered that Yogananda had said, he made me what I am. And when his eyes filled with tears, sharing that story with us, it was not difficult to see that grace continued right before our eyes. He made me what I am. For those who studied with him, he gave us everything, and he gave it freely. This year marks my 40th year of meeting him. I like to say that I was five at the time. (laughs) But he would want me to be truthful. (laughs) And it is truthful to say that it is a meeting that changed my life forever. He was always very clear in his teaching that God 
is the true guru, the teacher of all teachers. When I asked him to accept me as a disciple, he said, all right. (laughs) And he said, I will play that role for you. And then he said, let's do it. (laughs) And I knew he meant, let us walk this path together, dedicated to self and God realization. All through the years, he taught me primarily through mental and spiritual attunement with him ever guiding me in silence and teaching me how to be attuned to God, the guru within. Whenever I went to him, which was frequent, and I would ask him every time to direct me, to correct me, or guide me, he would simply say, you're doing fine. (laughs) Just keep on doing what you're doing. Sometimes I wondered if perhaps he didn't advise me directly because he knew I was too stubborn to listen. (laughs) But in my heart of hearts, I knew he was training me. I knew that he continually guided me from within because that was the highest way. A few years ago, I made a pilgrimage to India to visit the holy sites that are particularly relevant to our tradition of Kriya Yoga, sites related to the life and the teachers of Paramahansa Yogananda. It was a beautiful journey. And one place particularly moved me, stuck in my mind, and it came back to me as I was preparing to share with you today. It was in Sarampur, and this particular area, the Rai got on the shore of the Ganges. Sri Yukteswar lived down the lane from there. And after he finished writing his book, The Holy Science, that the timeless yogi, Mavatar Babaji, had instructed him to write. He went for his morning ablutions, his morning bath in the holy Ganges. And there at the Rai Ghat, he encountered the timeless sage, Mavatar Babaji. And if you've read Paramahansa Yogananda's book, The Autobiography of a Yogi, you'll remember that Sri Yukteswar was so overcome at this meeting with uh, Babaji, that first he invited Babaji to his home. (laughs) And, you know, Babaji declined. And then he said, well, let me just go and get some sweets, because he, he wanted to honor this great guru. So he hurried back to his home to bring some sweets to honor him. But when he returned, Babaji was gone. Sri Yukteswar told Yogananda that he was hurt that Babaji had left. He said that he thought, even if we meet again, I would not care to talk to him. (laughs) He was unkind to leave me so suddenly. And he clarified, he said, he realized that this was purely a wrath of love. Later, at the home, of his guru, Sri Yukteswar's guru, Lahiri Mahashaya, Sri Yukteswar has the opportunity once again to meet the sage, Babaji. But this time, he's unable to see him until Lahiri Mahashaya taps him on the forehead. And when he does see him, Babaji says to Sri Yukteswar, you must meditate more. Your gaze is not yet faultless. You could not see me hiding behind the sunlight. 
After those words, Babaji disappears into the hidden radiance. Our beloved teacher, friend, Guruji, has disappeared into the hidden radiance. Let us meditate more and behold him now, ever present with us as a light upon our path. And there at the Rai Ghat, someone had written on the wall the saying, Guru Kripa Hikevalam. That means the grace of God, the grace of the absolute, the grace of God, the grace of the Guru is absolute. It is all that is needed. Namaste.